Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. You can format the tables that you create in Publisher in order to enhance their appearance. Publisher has many table styles that you can apply to your tables. In addition to these table styles, you can also select individual elements of the table and then apply your own custom formatting if desired. If you want to apply one of the default table styles that are available, then start by clicking into the table that you want to format. Next, click the Design tab right up here, part of the Table Tools Contextual tab up in the ribbon. And then you'll see the styles that you can automatically apply shown in a list within the Table Formats group at the left-hand side of the ribbon. If you roll your mouse over those, it will preview what they look like in your table for you. You can scroll through and see all the various choices. When you find one you like that you want to apply, you apply it just by clicking and it will be applied to your table. Now if you want to customize the appearance of these default table formats, then click the More button in the lower right corner of the Table Formats list to display a drop-down of the styles. Now remember the More button is right here just below those scroll arrows. We'll give that a click and I find this to be a much easier way to view the various styles that are available here. But we're going to go to the bottom where it says Table Auto Format and give that a click. And that will open up the Auto Format dialog box that we see here. In this dialog box, first select one of the table formats at the left hand side. And as you do that, you'll see the sample appear to the right side in a preview pane. Like that. Once you find one that you like, whichever one that may be. And again, you can just click on these, like that. Then you can customize it by clicking the Options button at the bottom. And that will display a series of checkboxes in the Formats to Apply section below. And here you can check or uncheck to apply or remove the selected formatting from the selected table format. that. So we could, for example, remove the borders on this one. We could go back up and choose a different one and add the borders in. Scroll back up, add the borders in there. Once you find what you like and you've customized it, then you just click OK to apply your changes. To apply a custom fill color to table cells, first select the cells in the table to which you want to apply a custom fill color. We'll go ahead and select these cells here. Then click the Fill drop-down button, also located under Table Formats group here in the ribbon, and then choose your color. And select it by giving it a click. Now the other thing that you can do selecting those is you can use the fill drop down and select more fill colors which will launch the colors dialog box that we've seen throughout this course and here on the standard tab we could select one of the standard colors from the honeycomb you could click the custom tab and create your own custom color if you like we'll go ahead and cancel right now the other thing that you can do is select sample fill color when you do that your mouse pointer will turn into a little eyedropper tool. And the idea here is that we're going to sample a color from the existing presentation so that we can match it. So wherever you click with the end of the little eyedropper, it will select that color, like that. Click out of there, and you'll see then that the colors match. So it's a nice way to add continuity in terms of the colors to your publication. If you've applied a fill color and you want to remove it, you can select those cells, select the fill drop-down, and then select No Fill, and there would be no fill in there. 
Now, you can apply borders to your table cells to illustrate their display within your publication page as well. To do this, select the cells in the table to which you want to apply borders. Click and drag again. This time, we're going to look up in the Borders group just to the right of Table Formats. And there are three drop downs that we're going to use. The first one is the Line Weight drop down here. And that's where you select a weight or a thickness of that particular border. Give that a click. Next, we'll choose a line color. Give that a click. And then lastly, we'll use the borders drop down in order to apply the desired border style to the selected cells. Just the bottom, the top border only, left only, or all. Click out and we'll see what that does. Now in the Arrange group on the Design tab of the Table Tools Contextual tab within the ribbon, you'll find buttons that allow you to arrange other page content with your table. Let's go ahead and select our table. And here on the Arrange group, we'll see we have a variety of different buttons. First we have Wrap Text. Let's click that. And making that selection determines how Publisher will handle text wrapping. So if you have text outside of your table, do you want no wrapping at all? Do you want to wrap it around the table in a square, tight, top and bottom, through, and so forth? These are the same types of selections that you see in other Office applications, like Microsoft Word, for example. Now also, we have a couple of buttons here. We have Bring Forward and Send Backward. And these are used to determine how Publisher will handle overlapping objects on your table. For example, we have this image right here. If we click and drag this over, it's co covering up a portion of our table and we can't read it all. We want to change that. So we really want to bring this table forward. So we're going to click into it and then we're going to click the Bring Forward button and we'll see what that does. And of course you could select it and choose Send Backward. It does the opposite of that. That easy. You also have some alignment buttons. Click the Alignment drop-down. We'll have a series of choices here. And this determines how Publisher will align your table within the publication itself. You can choose, for example, to align it to the left, align it in the center, to the right, and so forth. Lots of different alignment choices. You can also use the Group and Ungroup buttons located in the upper right portion of the Arrange group to group or ungroup your table with other groups of tables. So if you have two tables and you want to group them together into a single element, you can do that, for example. You would select both the tables and then click Group. If you have them grouped together and you want to ungroup them, you just select it and click Ungroup, just like we saw before when we were grouping and ungrouping other elements like images and text boxes and so forth. You also have a Rotate button here, and you can use the drop-down and you can rotate your table if you want. You could even select Free Rotate, and if you select Free Rotate, you hover your mouse pointer over the table and then click and drag on that green resizing handle and you can free rotate the table any way you like. Go ahead and undo that. And then finally, in the Size group on the Design tab of the Table Tools Contextual tab within the ribbon, look at that now, over here, under Size. You can enter a height and a width for the selected table, so you can actually change the dimensions of the table using these arrows here, like that. You can also check the Grow to Fit text checkbox just below it, right there, to ensure that your table will expand to contain the text that you enter into its cells as you're entering data. 
So that's all there is to formatting tables in Publisher. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.